welcome back. Uh, Pastor Mike and I want to welcome you back to the couch. It's Tuesday night of Holy Week, and we're excited to be on this journey together for the week of Holy Week. It's, a, it's, the, it's also known as Passion Week, and uh, we desire for God to create greater passion in us as we venture toward a Good Friday and eventual Easter Sunday. Today, uh, Pastor Mike is going to read for us. Tonight, he's going to read for us Matthew chapter 21 as we continue on this venture um, in the week of Holy Week. And Pastor Mike, as I've said, we not only want to read it, we kind of want to put ourselves in right. the text and uh, ask questions of it as we can learn. So could you read for us? Sure. I'll start in Matthew 21 in verse 15, and then we're going to jump down to verse 33. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Now let's jump down to verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him, and they threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Well, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Yes, it's another great parable uh, that Jesus told, a, a story that is supposed to give truth. And in this particular parable, there are some parables that uh, Bible scholars and pastors alike can maybe argue a little bit about. This one here is pretty clear because right. in the front end, you see uh, in verse 15 kind of the posture of the Pharisees. And then at the end, it's like you can, you can see that the, par the Pharisees are like, yeah, this guy's talking about us. Right. You think? So it makes right. it very, very clear. But, but I think one of the things that we need to do instead of actually even just look at the hearts uh, and the position of the hearts of the Pharisees, we need to ask ourselves, uh, what do we think of and, and when it comes to ownership? Like, like I would say to you, what, what do you think you own? Uh, because in reality, we realize as followers of Jesus that we are, we're mere stewards. Um, right. You know, recently I, I actually snuck into one of my boys' rooms uh, to find a safe and quiet place to talk on the phone. And uh, while I was on the phone, he came in and he just kind of asked, what are you doing in my room? How do you think that went, Mike? <laughs> right, I've been with you long enough. I know what your answer is. You don't even have to tell me. <laughs> yeah, the answer was, uh, you don't have a room. Like, you know, right. you're borrowing my room. And before you know it, you'll be off to college and it'll still be my room. But, but the other side of that is, wow, you, you set your son straight. And, and in reality, I could say, I don't own a room either. Like, it's, right. it's, it's God's. And so what I'd like for you to do is to consider this parable that Jesus is speaking. Yeah, we want to consider um, his intent related to the Pharisees leading up to Good Friday. But we also want to use this text as an opportunity to say, God, you know, what is the posture of my heart as it right. relates to all things in ownership? Right. And, um, and what's my posture towards you. Pastor Mike, would you just take the time uh, on this Tuesday of Holy Week to pray for us? That's great. Why don't you pray with us? Lord, uh, we come together acknowledging you as our Lord. 
Uh, Jesus, I know uh, there are times where my posture is more like uh, the chief priests and the landowners uh, who think um, maybe this is my land and that I don't have to give you uh, what's due to you. And uh, for that, I repent and I say I'm sorry. And I pray uh, for the people joining with us in this journey that you would begin to move, as Stephen's already prayed, give us a passion for you. And I think that begins um, with us understanding that we, are, we have nothing and we are nothing apart from yes. you. We are not the owners of our own lives. And so we pray prayers of surrender all over again, specific surrender. You can have this week. You can have this moment. Uh, you can have this time that we're giving to you. Would you come and fill it? In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike, I think it would be cool to mention too, as we're getting closer to Good Friday, uh, if you have not had an opportunity, go on out and purchase some elements, some grape juice and maybe some crackers and bread uh, and have that at your house because on Friday night, our Good Friday service, we're going to partake together in communion. Hey, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 7 p.m.